Day eight of Washington Commanders training camp brought another new development to camp. A little bit of chippiness. Looks like the Commanders are ready to get some other competition in. That's coming up next week, but we're going to talk about what happened today on this episode of Locked On Commanders. You are Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for Sports Illustrated's CommanderGameDay.com. And I'm here with you every Monday through Friday. I appreciate you coming through for today's episode. Every day, I appreciate you coming through for every episode. This is your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. On today's episode, the Washington Post, Sam Fortier is going to come in, tell us his overall thoughts from the first week and three days or so of Washington Commanders training camp. We're also going to hear from cornerback Mike Sane. We're still going to do our day eight eye on the tiger, our continuing watch of quarterback Jaden Daniels. But we're going to start it all off talking about a little bit of chippiness here on day eight at Washington Commanders training camp. If you want to discuss this episode, anything else going on with the Washington Commanders, all you've got to do is send me a text message. Go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders. And from there, you can text me. I will text you. We can talk Washington Commanders, pretty much anything going on around the team, around the, the National Football League as well. You'll get bonus content. You'll get live text from practices, games, press conferences, a whole bunch of cool stuff. We started our own insider exclusive Zoom conferences. So that's been a lot of fun. Anyway, no apps to download, no hashtags. Just send text messages. You'll get them back as well. Join subtext.com slash locked on commanders to get in on that today. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with daily boosts or bonuses. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day at FanDuel.com. So head there to get started. Day eight of Washington Commanders training camp brought a little bit of tension, a little bit of trippiness. This is something that you come to expect from training camp. I've covered a lot of NFL training camps over my time, having the, uh, the blessing to cover the National Football League in some way, shape, or form. And you rarely go a full week without even seeing a little bit of chipping. It's honestly, sometimes even before pads come on, you get a little bit of shoving, a little bit of, hey, F you, man, no F you, man, and, and things like that. It's hot. People are working long hours. They're, they're, they're colliding against the same dudes over and over and over again. It just kind of is part, part of the nature of the beast. Now, I asked Dan Quinn, I think leading into day four's practice, and I said, hey, coach, like today is kind of the day, like kind of the window. We usually start seeing a little bit of, chippy, a little bit of chippiness coming from players. What are your thoughts on that? Have you addressed the team? So you hadn't addressed the team in training camp. Had addressed the team, OTAs, mini camp, stuff like that. Say, hey, look, it's not going to be accepted. When you fight, there are consequences in games. So when you fight on the practice field, there are going to be consequences again as well. He expects his guys to maintain discipline. He expects his guys to remember that we're all in it together. We're all here to fight for each other, compete together, and that's exactly what he expects them to do. And that's exactly what we've seen from the Washington Commanders. And, and honestly, even the day eight, quote unquote, chippiness, a little bit, subdued considering you know compared to other things that you've seen in nfl practices but it is the first time we've kind of seen that little bit of edge kind of show uh during the team drills there was a there was a play Jaden daniels targeted uh deami brown on a pass pass was broken up and then after the play everything's pretty much copacetic pretty much uh, uh status quo but you end up seeing zach Ertz, the veteran tight end and safety percy butler just get into a little bit again not a fight not a scuffle mostly just talking a little bit of pushing caillou blue kelly a uh, young cornerback gets in there and kind of kind of hugs, you know, Zach Gertz. You guys know what I'm talking about. Just kind of grabs him around and says, hey, man, let's be smart. Let's do this thing together. Uh, separate the two. They go on about their business with practice. Things kind of go on from there. But then we also see a coach end up getting a little bit turned up during practice as well. Not a conflict, right, because you got a coach, you got a player. Big run by Brian Robinson. We'll talk about that run here in just a little bit as well in our play of the day. But where did the run go through? Fedarian Mathis's assignment. Daryl Tapp, defensive line coach for the Washington Commanders, none too happy about that made sure that his team, his players, knew exactly what he, how he felt about that play. The, the Probably the, the loudest and the most turned up we've seen Daryl Tapp in a negative way uh, this entire training camp. But, hey, look, your defense just gave up about a 40-yard run to Brian Robinson during a four-minute drill where the simulation is here at the, at the end of the game. And if you're on defense, your team is trailing, needs to get the ball back. So more than enough reason to get angry there. So that's kind of the first time we've really seen the, the tempers kind of elevate a little bit here in training camp, and it's just kind of a sign that these guys are getting sick and tired of hitting each other. Second day in a row in pads, third day overall, and they're only hitting each other, right? Fedarian Mathis is hitting the same offensive lineman, 
those offensive linemen are hitting the same defensive linemen. They get a little bit sick of seeing each other. The safeties and tight ends went at it together in one-on-ones, uh, you know, two days in a row in pads. So again, just kind of temper is flaring a little bit. And joint practice is coming up in less than a week. It's Friday today. As we're doing this, the joint practice against the Jets comes up next Thursday. So we're less than a week. So the team's got to know interior. Like, hey, just hold it. Stay disciplined. Stay within there. I asked Mike Sanders still. You'll hear it here uh, in just a little bit in his interview how that discipline has been able to kind of uh, stand up through the test of the heat and the pads and all that stuff. And he said they just know that they're all working for one common goal. And so the way to do that is together, not against each other. You want to work together. Um, so, you know, people are humans. People make mistakes. People lose it, you know, every now and then. Uh, big hat tip to the teammates for getting in there and separating those two uh, before it blew up in any bigger than it needed to. But we did see, like I said, our first little crack in the foundation. These guys get a little bit hot, things like that. I'm sure the coaches are going to address that in their meetings. Or Zach Ertz himself is a veteran. I'm sure he knows uh, that, you know, that's not the kind of thing that they want to do on the practice field if they're going to go through and get this thing done. So we're going to do this in a little bit of a different order than we have been through training camp. I'm going to drop some other practice notes from Friday here. Cornelius Lucas was back on the field getting reps as a second team left tackle. There was a, a run play uh, by run, running back Austin Jones and Byron Pringle, who was in the second practice with the Washington Panthers and signing back with the team uh, just here this week, had a beautiful crack back block, really helped spring his teammate uh, for that big run. Tyler Owens, the safety that we've been talking about here on the show, we've had him on the show as well. Uh, big, big uh, you know, contributor here early in training camp. You're seeing him line up everywhere. You're seeing him on the edge. You're seeing him in more of an off-ball linebacker type of stance. Safety. The dude is literally everywhere, including when Marcus Rosemi Jack Saint, the undrafted free agent wide receiver, trying to make some noise in training camp, had a pass thrown to him from, I believe, Marcus Mariota. Went right off his hands, tipped in the air, right into the waiting arms of Tyler Owens, who secured the interception. So Tyler Owens out there making some plays for himself. Linebacker Jamin Davis on the edge again today. Uh, saw him out there with the third team unit, not seeing a lot of off ball linebacker work for him. We have seen some, however, Benjamin St. Juice, no 11s, uh, no 11 on 11s today for the majority of the second day in a row. No one on ones, either no word officially on injuries, but again, they don't have to report any official word on injuries right now. So that's not really a surprise. Michael Davis getting first team reps in his place. And then the kicker competition, right? Obviously that's something that a lot of people are paying attention to. Both kickers went head to head yesterday and today. Both went five for five yesterday. Today, they both went four for five, and they both missed the exact same kick. They also both got run-on field goals in game scenario practice and team, uh, team drills. Both of them came on and made their quote-unquote game-winning or game-sealing uh, field goals as well. So essentially, neck and neck, uh, as far as stats are concerned, to me, it's, it's actually kind of close. Uh, today, Ramiz Ahmed, his long field goal make was uh, certainly cleared the crossbars by more than Riley Patterson's, but I think overall, Riley Patterson's kicks have looked uh, a little bit better than, than Rummy's meant for what that's worth. But again, statistically, they're pretty much on the exact same uh, page. And then uh, Bryson Terrain, we talked about him on the show. He had a really nice catch on a pass from quarterback Sam Hartman, a really nice connection. They were doing sevens, but they were trying to move the ball, kind of doing a game scenario drill. Uh, that catch came over cornerback Nick Whiteside in a late minute, kind of a last minute type of situation. We're trying to get the ball down the field for a game winning field goal. So those are kind of our news and notes from practice on day eight. Coming up, we're going to keep track of Jaden Daniels. I was charting everything that he did in teams like I always do. So day eight of Eye on the Tiger. And then you're going to hear from Sam Fortier of the Washington Post and Washington Commanders rookie cornerback Mike Sainer still. That's next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience. eBay Motors knows that what helps NFL teams bring home the winning trophy is also what helps you bring your ride-or-die vehicle home alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and even level it up to peak performance. Whether you're looking for superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whatever it is you're looking for, they probably got it or they've got a reasonable facsimile, something comparable that you're going to be able to be uh, satisfied with. Whether you're looking to add speed to your vehicle, power to your engine, or style to your car, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you're always going to find what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time, or you will get your money back because with eBay Motors, you're going to burn rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Jaden Daniels had another solid day of practice on day eight, Friday out here in Ashburn, Virginia. But the biggest moment of celebration 
came from a run by Brian Robinson. Thanks for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day, every day, every day. Thanks for coming through. Make sure you come back on Sunday. We'll be back out here for practice so you know we're dropping another episode. In the meantime, if you need more sports coverage, check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network program to bring you the biggest stories in sports every single day free on the on YouTube. 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Again, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So day eight of our eye on the Tiger, Washington quarter, Washington Commanders quarterback, Jane Daniels on the day went five for eight in 11 on 11 drills. Uh, that's a 63% completion rate. Again, you typically want about a 70% rate when you talk about completing five of your eight pass attempts. Not a terrible uh, one for one comparison there. You know, obviously, if you're getting more passes, you're going to expect to kind of get in a rhythm there for uh, and and for the second straight day and i think this is pretty significant Jaden daniels getting all of his team reps with the first team so i don't know that it's time to say Jaden daniels is a starter again we assume that that's going to eventually be the outcome head coach dan quinn even went as far as to say it's not a secret like that's obviously the plan but there's a process to it they're going to work towards it it's not going to be something that they rush into but two days in a row both padded practices every team rep that Jaden daniels took was with the first team so i do think that's pretty significant uh, again, five for eight overall in the first set. He threw two passes, completed one of those. Uh, that was the first pass, a play action rollout to the right side, wide open Brian Robinson. A brilliant uh, design for the for the play. Uh, really got the running back out there in the open. He was running up field, guys. And I'll tell you, if you're a back end safety, last line of defense of your defense, you see B-Rob coming with a full head of steam. You're not trying to tackle this dude. You're trying to find an angle to push him out of bounds. Uh, second pass was another play action pass. This one was a play action pitch, and it went deep to De'Ami Brown. Ball just a little bit out there ahead of Diami. Uh, Jaden probably used to throwing those bombs to Terry McLaurin, who's just a little bit faster. Uh, Sam Cosme, uh, there was there, the rest of the the rest of that possession was all uh, run plays. Sam Cosme, uh, right guard for your Washington Commanders, was a player that Dan Quinn really mentioned uh, as having you know not maybe all the splash plays that get you know all the tweets and all that stuff, but being a very consistent player on tape, and he really appreciates that. Got a really nice wham block, cleared out a defender. I didn't catch who the defender was. Uh, but that defender's hopefully caught the license plate on that bus because he got mowed down by Sam Cosme. Next set, again, first team, first pass completed, screen to the right side of the field to Jahan Dotson, who turned up field, made a couple of moves, uh, got loose in space. You love seeing that from Jahan. Second pass completed was an over route to Zach Ertz, just over the outstretched hands of Jeremy Chin. I mean, that ball, like everybody kind of went, <gasps> and then everybody went, oh, man, that was a really good ball. <laughs> Ended up in the hands of Zach Ertz. Third pass completed. Left side of the field, Terry McLaurin over Mike Sainer still, who was in great coverage, great position. But again, guys, ball was in the right place. Receiver made the play. Uh, fourth pass was also completed. Right side hitch to Odlamide Zacchaeus. And then the first incompletion of the day came on the next route. Left side deep route to Mitchell Tinsley. Ball just went out of bounds, and Mitchell Tinsley really didn't have a chance to keep it in bounds if he wanted to. Uh, final first team set was a, was a game scenario. Three minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock. Washington Commanders have the ball in their own end of the field. They're up two points. They need to drain this clock, right? First run, or first play of the drive, a run, and that was the big one, our play of the day. Brian Robinson through the left side A-gap, and that's where Fidari Mathis was supposed to be. It's not where he was, and instead it was Brian Robinson ripping off about 40 to 45 yards before he smartly went down to preserve the ability to drain the clock as much as possible, put his team in field goal range automatically. You got a new set of downs, and now you're running the clock, and that's exactly what you want in a game-ending scenario only one pass on that drive that was the incompletion to De'Ami Brown broken up by cornerback James Pierre the pass was a little bit late a little bit behind and so when that happens you kind of expect the PBU to come and James Pierre did secure that that was the play that at the end of it is when Zach Ertz and Percy Butler again just a little bit of shoving and some yelling uh not a fight per se but a little bit of uh angst being shown up there we also saw some one-on-ones from uh receivers and, and DBs linebackers tight ends and running backs we watched the O-line versus the D-line on Thursday today, we went over, watched the receivers, running backs, linebackers, tight ends, and safeties, and cornerbacks work. They were both going on at the same time, so what I did, guys, I stood in the middle of the field, and I tried to focus as much as I could. I kind of bounced back and forth. Uh, I saw Terry McLaurin slip Emmanuel Forbes. Uh, Emmanuel Forbes ended up on his butt. That's embarrassing, but that's just kind of what Terry McLaurin can do. Uh, it's the guys, Lamade Zacchaeus made a nice play over Mike Davis, the cornerback. Mitchell Tinsley shook Caillou Blue Kelly out of his cleats and got wide open. Uh, for a play as well. Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey, uh, was going up against cornerback A.J. Woods, or safety A.J. Woods, defensive back A.J. Woods. A.J. Woods all over him. Would have drawn a penalty. I don't know if the ref on the field actually threw a flag or not, but they should have uh, at a minimum. But Luke McCaffrey eventually just says, get off me, bro. Gets clean of, clear of him, gets the ball, makes the play for his quarterback. Davion Davis had a nice catch 
over uh, Chagosi and Newsium on a deep ball uh, that drew a lot of cheers from the uh, from the fans. Emmanuel Forbes later on going up against Terry McLaurin was flagged for DPI. Look, that's a tough matchup, guys. You're going to hear a lot of Terry McLaurin beating Emmanuel Forbes. You got to remember that's that's Terry McLaurin out there. Uh, that's a tough matchup for anybody. Luke McCaffrey uh, was able to shake inside of Mike Sanders, still come up with a nice catch and a rookie on rookie matchup. Tight end Ben Sinet and safety Quan Martin had a couple of good battles in the one on ones. Chris Rodriguez Jr. had a really, really, I've told you guys that Chris Rodriguez Jr., a better receiver than he's known for, had a really strong plant with his right foot, or no, with his left foot, broke to the right, got free against linebacker Bo Bauer, uh, ended up wide open for, for a pass there uh, as well. So, Really great set of one-on-ones. I uh, really love watching the one-on-ones. Wish we could film them, but unfortunately, we can't. That's going to wrap up our notes for practice. Let's hear from Sam Fortier of the Washington Post, and then we're going to kick over to Washington Commanders cornerback, Mike Sanders. But we're going to start it all off just asking Sam Fortier, what is your overall take of training camp compared to the training camps you've been to before? Uh, camp is camp is going really well. I am excited to be here, uh, not facing you, facing the camera while I answer this question <laughs> as I was directed to do. But no, I mean, anytime you have a camp where uh, there's new ownership, new vibe, and a really highly regarded quarterback, I mean, that is a really good recipe for success because, David, this is my fifth training camp, and I got to yeah. tell you, man, like, this is probably, everybody says in camp, oh, we're going to be better communicators. We're going to score more points. We're going to get more takeaways, blah, 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 blah. This year, like, I don't think they're going to be, you know, world beaters, but I think that they have a chance to really build something here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really kind of what everybody's talking about, right? It's like the different vibes and not just the different vibe just around the organization, but the way this organization is operating. So if you can put your finger on something, like you said, your fifth training camp here, what is different from the way this group is running this training camp versus the camps you've been to before? <laughs> There's a quarterback who everyone believes can be the guy. <laughs> like, that has got to be number one. And number yeah. two, um, you know, with Ron Rivera, it was – one voice, one structure. He was the guy making all the decisions. Um, and obviously, you know, he was he was limited in that first camp um, with his cancer, which obviously mm -hmm. is no fault of his own. Right. But I think that now you feel like uh, the power structure is, is obviously Adam Peters is in charge, but with Dan Quinn, um, you just have more checks and balances. And I think that, you know, not having COVID and, and, and having a quarterback, I think those things are going to help you uh, install your program and, and get things going. Or in the words of Dan Quinn, get it rocking <laughs> faster than, uh, you know, maybe the last administration. Well, let's talk about that quarterback, right? That quarterback that everybody does believe in. I think that belief is growing by the practice, right? He has had some down moments, but for the most part, I mean, he's looked really sharp, right? He hasn't thrown an interception in, what, four practices? I think hasn't thrown an interception in any of the padded practices, I don't think. What has really stood out to you about Jaden so far? So, I mean, you touched on one of the things, uh, his ability to limit turnovers, and that was something he was obviously really good at um, in college. I forget the exact number, but basically, yeah. according to PFF, he had the lowest turnover-worthy play grade of any FBS quarterback they've had, uh, I believe, since 2014 when they started tracking that metric. But I think that, like, what I would say, you know, because it's easy to talk about a lot of different things if you're talking about Jaden, but to focus on one specifically, I think, like, his ability – to understand the offense and, and play in rhythm really stands out to me. And maybe that's true because last year we didn't see that a lot with Sam Howell. But, like, even how quickly he gets to his checkdowns impresses me. And, like, that's a thing yeah. that we didn't see from Howell last season. And that's a thing that you really do see on his college tape. Like, if you go back, they run a ton of vertical routes because if you're a team that has Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors, you're going to do that. Right. But, like, even when he – if he sees a coverage or if he sees a defense where he's getting pressure or he sees, you know, they, they have four deep – um, and those guys are on top of, of his receivers. Like, he just gets his check down super quickly and keeps things in rhythm, allows guys to gain yards after the catch. So I would say, like, the quickness of his decision-making and the handle that he has on the offense, those are all things that I think stand – and that obviously informs his ability to limit turnovers. So uh, not not to just, like, sit here and uh, blow smoke uh, for the dude, <laughs> but, like, it's uh, it's it's been impressive so far. More coming up with Sam Fortier of the Washington Post, and we've got Mike Sanders still, Washington Commanders quarterback, so come back for that. Coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders brought to you by FanDuel and apparently horse flies just everywhere. Uh, I love sports. You love sports. We all love sports. That's why we're here. And with FanDuel, we can keep the sports going even when they actually kind of slow down a little bit. The NBA playoffs are over. NHL playoffs are over. NFL is not fully back. Major League Baseball is not actually fully into the pennant race yet. So we don't have sports sportsing the way that we want them to, as we usually do throughout the season. But with FanDuel, you can keep the sports going whenever you want. Because all you got to do is go to the FanDuel Sportsbook app, open it up, look through the bets, and make any bet that you're in the mood for, and boom, just like that, you are right back in the challenge, right back in the competition. 
right back into the sports. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus every single day. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day, all summer long. New customers, you've been getting bonus bets, $150 in bonus bets with the winning $5 bet. I've seen that go up to $200 in bonus bets with the winning $5 bet. It kind of fluctuates here and there. And then you've got Tuesday, FanDuel, uh, Dinger Tuesdays, where you get you bet on a Major League Baseball game and you get bonus bets for every home run across the Major League Baseball on that day. All kinds of bonuses just like that. So head over to FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. A lot of people thinking that this could be, uh, I don't want to say a breakout season for Terry McLaurin, right? Because he's obviously a known commodity. But could this be arguably Terry's best production, productive season based on this quarterback? Do you think it's too early to go that far to start predicting that kind of thing? Look, if I'm going to sit here and say Jaden looks as good as he looks, then yeah, like how could that not mean an uptick in production for Terry, especially when Jaden has had such a strong performance. Even going back to high school with this guy named Darren Jones at Cajon, uh, he's had just really strong production with his number one receivers. You look at Brandon Ayuk in Arizona State. You look at Malik Neighbors at LSU. I mean, every place he's had a number one receiver, he's been like, yo, I'm going to get you the ball so you can go off. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun because pretty much I think, I think I'm sure you're the same. Every time you see, unfortunately, it's been Emmanuel Forbes, but every time you see Terry and Emmanuel and you see single high, you're like, oh, they're in man and it's single high. Like that ball's going to Terry, right? And so far, it's been pretty successful. So I think you're going to see a lot of that season. Let's flip to that defensive side. And you know what? Let's stick with Emmanuel Forbes. Honestly. A lot of questions about him. I've been telling people, I like, listen, yes, he's gotten beat a good amount, but he's also been in position a good amount, just better balls, better receiving uh, ability maybe sometimes. Where do you think Emmanuel Forbes stands right now, uh, you know, less than a full two weeks into training camp? I got two things here. One, David, I respect the question. I appreciate it. But I remember last year we were hyping up Manuel Forbes. So I'm going to say, like, Manuel looks fine, but I'm not drawing any hard conclusions. Yeah. And I'm actually going to zoom out and go back to what you said on the, on the last question, which is, like, when you see single high, they are doing X. Yeah. And to me, the thing is, is, like, is Joe Witt going to be as aggressive as he talks in the press conferences? Because if he plays a ton of cover one, if he plays more press man, which Benjamin St. Juice told me yesterday he expects them to, then I am just very curious at how this defense is going to look because you don't have the traditional edge rushers, you know, the, the highly paid, highly regarded guys that you have the last couple of years, right, in terms of sweat and young. So can they still generate pressure without those horses? Can you have John Allen and Deron Payne have better years? So it's it's all a huge question to me about will they be as aggressive as it yeah. seems like they were? Because under Jack Del Rio, they weren't. They were more right. timid. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, with defenses in training camp, what they'll always try to tell you is, look, we can't go 100% out here. We can't really hit guys out here. Well, guess what? That's going to change here in a little bit. we got New York Jets joint practice come up in less than a week and then the preseason game. So we'll get a better look at what Joe Adif, Joe, Joe Joe Witt Jr.'s defense is going to look like in a real NFL game, real NFL environment. Sam Fortier of the Washington Post. You can check him out every day, everywhere you want to in real life. So make sure you do that. The, the most famous Sam in Commander Park today. Eat your heart out, Sam Cosby. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, man, I, I can never come back on after you said that, but thanks so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, that was Sam Fortier of the Washington Post. Thank you to him for coming through. Now we're going to flip it over to cornerback Mike Sainrasil of your Washington Commanders. All right, Mike, how do you feel so far during uh, your first NFL training camp? I feel really good. Um, I think, you know, the team's in a great spot right now, competing every single day, going hard, getting each other better. Coach is doing a great job, um, and then we're doing a great job taking coaching. Um, just coming out here, like I said, it's battling every single day. I feel like I'm in a great spot mentally, physically, taking care of myself, finding a routine for myself, you know, listening to vets and, you know, seeking guidance, asking questions. Yeah. So, um, you know, I love, I love where we are right now. I love the space right now. Yeah, absolutely, man. And as far as, you know, as clean as a technician as guys like Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson can be, and as, as accurate as Jaden has been with the football, it's hard for you guys to make plays against that first team uh, look sometimes. But Coach Quinn mentioned that you're one of the guys that on tape stands out as being consistent, always where you need to be. What is it like to hear your ball coach talk about you being one of those consistent presences that he is noticing this early in training camp? Um, you know, I think, you know, that's a very great compliment from Coach. I think for me is just making sure I take care of my job. Um, you know, be the one eleven of the defense. Um, you know, like you said, just knowing that my assignment is going to take me to you know where I'm supposed to be on the field. Um, but you know, I just got to keep being consistent. Like you said, just keep going at it every single day. Keep you know studying my playbook. Keep watching film so that would come game times. You know, later in the season, um, it's just second nature. For me. Yeah, and coach also mentioned that playing that slot. Like a lot of people look at it as like an isolated position, but it's almost like being a safety because you literally got to be able to do everything, pass cover, fit slots, defend the run. Where, which part of that job do you really find the most appealing? Uh, I, I love the whole thing. I love the whole package of you know being a slot, uh, slot corner, slot nickel. 
Um, I love, you know, coming up in the run game. I love defending passes. Uh, and then, like, I just I enjoy being able to, you know, communicate at a very high level, you know, be very vocal. Um, so, you know, like I said, just I think I think the whole star position itself is just very, it's a very unique position. Yeah, you guys are eight practices in, and so far we've only had like one little shoving match, not even a fight, right? That's, that shows a lot of discipline in your guys' group, especially as hot as it's out here. Like y'all gotta be, you know, your nerves gotta be running a little bit thin. Where does that discipline coming from? Um, just understanding what the bigger picture is. Uh, I think, you know, temperatures flare, uh, you know, you're around the same guys every single day. Um, it gets hot, but just being able to maintain that self-control um, and understand the focus isn't, you know, necessarily the guy in front of me who's talking, who's pushing, who's shoving. It's about, all right, you know, I'm going to let him act how he has to come back and do the same thing over and over again. Um, and just, you know, just keeping that focus, staying, you know, staying on task, not letting little things become distractions. So um, I think that's where it comes from. Absolutely. Fan bases, college fan bases are kind of known as being a little bit more passionate, a little bit more tradition. This fan base obviously has a lot of tradition to it. What do you think about this fan base as you've gotten to know them since you've been drafted? Uh, I think it's a very, very fun fan base. Um, you know, you've been out here the past couple open practices. Uh, you know, they're out here cheering in this heat, you know, out here with us. Um, it feels good to have a fan base who's right behind you, standing behind you, and, you know, very supportive of everything that we're doing. So. Um, you know, being able to, you know, and practice and interact with them, I think it's, I enjoy it a lot. Um, and I know they love it as well because, you know, they pay to see us play. So, um, you know, I love our fan base and I can't wait to continue this journey with them. Yeah, and then how do you, how do you describe the Michigan fan base? I don't know the Michigan fan base. How do you describe the Michigan fan base? Best in the nation. Yeah. What, what do you think about the guys who, you know, some, some fans, some college fans, it's like, all right, you're out of college, good luck to you, but I'm looking at the new squad, right? But what do you think about those Wolverines fans that are Commanders fans now because Mike Sanders still is a commander? Um, I think it just shows the the Michigan family. Like it runs deeper than just college. Um, you know, they, they support you all the way through. Some of us, you know, we go off to teams who are now rivals against their Detroit Lions. You know what I mean? So sure. they still have that individual love and support for you know you as a player. So um, I've always been very supportive and appreciative of you know the Michigan fan base. Um, but you know, on the other hand, it is the ones who just you know you're there. They love you while you're there. And then it's on to the next group, which, you know, rightfully so, they're supporting their college team. Yeah. Um, so, but at the end of the day, I know I have a family in them. So whenever I go back, I'm always showing up appreciation. You know, I'll, you know, I'll be late. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's episode. Coming up on Sunday, we've got another post-practice episode dropping for you. So make sure you come through for that. In the meantime, if you got questions or comments, all you got to do is reach out and text me. Join subtext.com slash locked on commanders. Send me your text. Send me your questions. We'll converse. We'll go back and forth. You'll get bonus content. You'll get inside information. All kinds of fun stuff. Again, join subtext.com slash locked on commanders for your second listen of the day. Make the draft dudes, Joe Marino and Kyle Krabs, your second listen on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, thanks for coming through like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, have a great weekend, and I will see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.